Good evening, guys. Welcome to our Mend Along. I'm really excited for this one. I, I, I have a massive mending pile. That, I don't know about you guys, but I find like I put stuff in them, you know, oh, that needs mending, that needs mending. And then I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered to do it, can't be bothered to do it. And then I do it and it takes five minutes. And I'm like, why did I keep putting that off? That is absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Um, so delighted to have Eleanor and Sarah here from Fast Fashion Therapy. Hello. So I'm going to ask them just to to introduce themselves and uh, we were just sort of chatting in the green room about how this might work. I think Eleanor and Sarah have said they're quite happy to you know sort of mend and chat and and answer questions so if you've got questions you know let's let's make full use of the chat box and chat to each other and ask any questions and things and I can relay them. If you've got specific you know a really specific question pop it in the ask a question box and also if you've got some mending with you that you want some advice with and you want to be able to show it and, and talk to Eleanor and Sarah, let me know in the chat box and I can invite you on screen and you can you can do that. You know, you can show the the item that you're trying that you're mending um and ask Eleanor and, and Sarah for their advice. So I think I hope that might be quite helpful for some people, I think. So if that's something that you'd like to do, don't be scared about coming on screen. Um it's honestly not nothing horrendous. Um and you know that'll make it nice and easy um to be able to get some personalized advice. So um, I'll be quiet and let you guys, I might actually turn my camera off to give you guys a bit more screen space. Um, and, but I can, I'll leave my mic on so I can sort of relay questions and things to you as well. But, um, yeah, okay. if you guys want to take it, take it away. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, we're for fashion therapy. Um, uh, I'm Eleanor and we've been running our workshops in London for about a year and a half or so now. Um, and they basically focus on teaching clothing repair and alteration skills. Um, so most of our workshops are free um, to make it as easy for as many people to come as possible. And um, we actually started them separately as we both uh, started workshops at the Create Place, which is in Bethnal Green in London. Um, and then we were brought together by the Create Place, um, as they said, you know, we've got similar interests and maybe it could be a good collaboration. Um, and we've been working together since then. Yeah, it's been good. I think it's coming up for two, well, two years in August, isn't it? Yeah. I think we've been working together anyway. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's been good and it, uh, it's great having lots, so many different people coming along um, and the, all the different men's that we have. Um, I mean, every, every, well, we do it twice a month, but every time we have a session, we have so many different things that people bring along, um, which is really interesting. Um, and it can get really busy with all the sewing machines going. And um, yes, yeah, so it's quite nice when there's lots of hand sewing and it can be a bit calmer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, so I think we were gonna start off maybe with like talking through a technique. We were talking about doing like a darning technique or something first um, that we could show as a start to the mend along. Um, so I could show that now. Yeah. Okay, if I can get the camera in the right position, <laughs> Um So yeah, if there's any other techniques that you're interested in getting a bit of advice on, then you can just ask us in the chat. So this one is, I've got a darning mushroom here, um, which is kind of the start, um, the first thing that you kind of need to get going on darning. Um, but you can kind of use anything that's got a kind of flat um, surface that's big enough um, to cover the hole that you're working on. Uh, so I'm just going to find the hole in my sleeve. Um, but yeah, you can find these darning mushrooms. This one's a vintage one. So I got it second hand, I think probably on eBay. Or you can find them new as well. Um, I know that John Lewis sell them as well. Um, and basically... I was just going to say, um, so Eleanor wrote a really good blog. Because we realised uh, when we do our workshops, we bring the equipment with us for people to use. And we realised that everyone's at home and wouldn't be able to have the equipment. So say um, you didn't have to go and buy a dining mushroom. Ellen has done a really good blog about what you can use instead and just items for your kitchen. Um, I'm not sure if I can put it in the chat. I'll try. But if you go to our website, you can see all our different tutorials on there. Sorry, Ellen, go on. That's all right. Um, yeah, so once you've got your whatever it is you're darning on top of, starting mushroom here um, you can get your item of clothing over the top of the mushroom 
and you just want to kind of hold the fabric loosely around the edge um, so that you're not like pulling it to make the hole bigger um, but that it just sits quite comfortably there and it's not going to move around um, if you're working on like an item of clothing like this you want to work on the reverse of it uh, so because um, that tends to be the messier side the side that you're seeing and then when you turn it the right way you'll kind of see the neater side so I'm just going to thread up my needle Um, Eleanor, do you think we have darning? Um, do you think people darn mostly at our workshops, or do you think it's a mixture? Yeah, I mean, it's, it comes up quite often, doesn't it? I think um, knitwear kind of getting eaten by moths, or just like it's an easy thing to wear down. Um, so it's quite a common one, I think, that people want to kind of learn that one, uh, learn the darning technique just as a kind of way of keeping it going. And also, I guess it can be used on like your jeans or something as well, like on mm. a woven or like on t-shirt material as well. So it's quite like a good basic technique to use across a lot, a lot of different things. Um, so with this, when you um, thread up your needle, you want about 30 centimetres of yarn and it's kind of up to you whether you want to make it match the item of clothing that you're working on or if you want it to be a contrasting kind of um, style so you can make it more of like a visible mend which a lot of people do tend to go for at our workshops it's quite a good way to get into it um, and you just want to try and match the yarn in thickness to whatever it is you're working on um, and that just makes it a bit of a smoother darn at the end so starting off you're kind of just starting a little bit to the side of the hole and then you can just do a stitch to kind of the corner of the hole there. So you've got a bit of space above and a bit of space to the side. And you just do kind of two stitches on the same spot. And that just secures your yarn. And then you're just doing stitch a row of stitching going up the side of the hole like this. I see it there and then turning back the other way and doing the same at the end of each row you want to leave a tiny little loop like that so it's kind of just sitting above the surface and that just gives a bit of space for the new yarn to shrink when you wash it and it won't kind of shrink down the whole jumper or whatever it is you're working on Eleanor, uh, Karen said, um, are you working on the inside or the outside of the garment? So this is on the inside. So yeah, this is a sleeve actually. So you can see I've just turned it so that it's, yeah, we're working on the inside and then you'll turn it the right way afterwards and that'll be the neater side. Also, Karen's asked about um, holes on inner thighs and actually that's what I'm going to do, do next. So, um, so stick with us, Karen, and you can learn that one too yeah that's quite a common one that we get at our workshops it seems to be a classic place where people need to be patching it up yeah i don't know why they don't just reinforce them when they make them <laughs> <It'd be something laughs> yeah so you can kind of carry on um like this working your way across the hole so you're doing the same thing having a couple of stitches just but like below the hole um, or to the side of the hole um, and then when you get to the hole you're jumping over it and doing one big stitch so it just sits like that so there's just one long stitch there rather than like pulling it tight and closing up the hole and you just carry on like that all the way across the hole with something fine like this jumper you want to keep your rows quite close together so it's not like too many gaps in between the like the rows and the weave when you come to finish it so stuart's asking um is it the same process for socks yeah so it'll be the same process i'd say the only difference is you might want to use a different um like shape uh darning mushroom or whatever it is that you're using so i think 
sometimes the darning eggs work a bit better with socks because it gives you like more of a 3D shape. So because it's like smaller and the kind of, um, yeah, like round as top, it gives you the kind of shape of we're doing, say, the toe or, yeah, I guess on the heel, you would probably still use a darning mushroom because that's a bit of a bigger spot. Um, but yeah, it's just the same uh, structure. I also, um, I was at a talk and it was, and there's a company called Socko and they sell socks, but also you get a piece of the yarn with the socks so that um, then you can darn your, uh, darn your own socks. But she said that it's quite important with socks to have some nylon in the yarn as well, because then just gives it a little bit more of a, um, I guess just strength and a tiny bit of stretch when you're wearing them. Yeah. Can I ask a question about darning socks? Because um, I think, well, I don't know, maybe maybe everybody does, but I, I don't feel like many of us have, you know, proper like woolen socks anymore. We mm. sort of go for the, the bamboo or the, you know, M&S specials or whatever. Can, can you still darn synthetic fabrics? Yeah, you can still darn on basically anything with a kind of even like a woven or a knit structure, you can still oh, darn yeah. on it. So it doesn't really matter what like the material is as long as there's that like, yeah, like a weave or a knit to darn into, then you're fine. Cool, and, and I, I'm not sure if I missed you saying, what what's the um, thread there that you're using? Um, so this one I'm actually using is a merino yarn that I've got. Um, so I just got this from, um, it was like leftover um, yarn from a fashion, a fashion brand that I know. Okay. Um, so it was actually on like a big uh, reel that they would use on like the knitting machines. Um, but this one, yeah, like kind of two ply, so it's quite a fine one. Um, but you can get specific kind of darning yarns, which are kind of this thickness as well, that you can normally buy in quite a lot of like sewing yeah. and haberdashery. Um, I've yeah. got a big bundle here, actually. <laughs> and so these, these ones I've been, I've been picking up from different um, charity shops. You can often see them. Obviously, we can't get out of charity shops in a minute. But all of these different wow. ones, and there's some quite lovely, like vintage packaging ones. But this one was a new one, um, and it's called it's called Mending Wool, and it's 55% wool and 45% nylon. I think that's quite common for the newer ones that you can get. Um, and then because we get asked a lot about um, where to get the yarns from, mm. so we've actually put together some kits. And like why people are in lockdown because it is harder to get them. Um, so we put together some kits with some different colour yarns and with the needles and then instructions as well. Um, so people could, are able to do some mending while you know, there's a bit more time. I'll find that in our post. So is that, I'm just looking, I've just clicked on the link on your website. That's the, the darning kits. Um, yeah, so I think it, it oh, actually yeah. then forwards to our Etsy shop. Yeah, I'll post a link for that. Yeah, so oh, this one that I'm using is actually in those kits as well. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Great, thanks, Jen. And um, Heather says, I've darned thick socks for walking boots because her big toe goes through socks all the time and her darning's nowhere near as good as, as yours, Eleanor, but now she knows <laughs> how to do it properly, so thank you. Oh, <laughs> it's very therapeutic watching Eleanor darn. Does it it's very people doing it though, isn't it? Because it's that sort of meditative, you know, in and out, in and out. It forces you to slow down as well. There's, um, I don't know if you've come across, there's a, uh, I think she's American or Canadian, Katrina Rodebar, and she talks about mendfulness instead of mindfulness. So oh, she talks nice. about, you know, and you're sort of, when you're doing it, you're, you're, you know, thinking about the garment and, and mm. you know, all that sort of thing. So I think that's quite a really nice concept. Yeah, it's quite a nice one, a technique as well, because it is, has got that like repetition in it, that once you get comfortable with it, you can kind of, yeah, like it is that mindful thing of like, just you're almost like zoning out whilst you're still concentrating kind of thing. And you can do it in front of the telly, do you know, you don't have to have the machine like rattling in a way, do you? You yeah, can do it um, with the telly on. The only thing I find is if I'm um, chatting and doing it, I do kind of lose my place and there's a few <laughs> extra holes. <laughs> So when you ended, when that thread came to the end, you didn't worry about tying it or anything. You just oh yeah, right, yeah, that one. Um, so yeah, just like we did at the start, where did like two stitches on the same spot, mm -hmm. just did that to secure it, and then snipped it down. So there's like a tiny little tail there. Brilliant. 
um but yeah once it kind of especially with water once it washes it'll just like felt it a bit more mm. together um so you don't really need to knot it oh that's a really good one jessica any tips yeah. for repairing bras when the underwires poke out because bras are expensive aren't they so yeah yeah i have done this um see if, if you could get some tape so there's things um like bias binding is quite good um because it's quite soft but if you if you go to have a dash shop and just buy think, um kind of some some tape that's already you know folded so um, let me see if i've got some bias binding to show you um and then that way you could just snip a piece off and then just stitch it over to reinforce it really so rather than kind of going over the, the hole with the needle and thread. It's not, so it's, it's just going to poke the wire out. In and then put this, put the bias binding over the top and sew that in. Yeah, um, I've just got some off camera, but one second. Right. I'm going to end up getting all my haberdasher kit out now. <laughs> <laughs> not going to be able to move by the end because you're going to surround <laughs> yeah. yourself with all this stuff. I'm loving Sarah's notice board as well. I'm loving your oh, notice yeah. board with all those lovely things pinned to it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was my to-do list, but then I got fed up, keep looking at it all the time. <laughs> <it out. laughs> so I thought I'd put some pretty things up instead. Um, so this is bias binding. So you'd use it in dressmaking to go around the edges and sort of finish edges. So you can see it's got like folds in it. So those folds will already be done when you um, buy it. But it just you could just chop off like a small piece and then literally just kind of fold that bit over the the wire. So tuck the wire back in, fold that over the hole and just kind of just stitch it around. It doesn't matter if it's not neat. You can just stitch it around and that should hold it. This one's quite fine, but you could probably get a much stronger one than this. Could you do it? Could you do that with a, like a piece of ribbon or something like that? Yeah, you could. I think the only thing with ribbon is um, it's not got as much uh, movement in it so this is cut on the bias so mm. it means it's like really flexible so I think with ribbon it just um yeah I mean you could it'd be fine it, this would just kind of give you a little bit more movement mm -hmm. and you can just adapt it a bit better or manipulate it a bit better yeah but yeah if you've got ribbon at home then rather than going out to buy some and presumably if it if it you know after a couple of weeks or months or whatever it pokes through again you can just unpick it and put another bit on oh i won't unpick it i'll just put it over the top oh, would you? it's not uncomfortable yeah because then it's just stronger again yeah but obviously if it's going to be uncomfortable then yeah yeah brilliant. yeah it happens all the time i think it's when you machine wash them i think it happens that looks really neat eleanor it's amazing <laughs> This is the bit which is quite nice to do because you're just getting the lines in place. It's when you've got to do the under and over where you've got to think about it a bit more. <laughs> you're very, it's very uniform, the like how you've, you've got them all like lined up really neatly. When I've done it, I've got like, you know, one's a bit further apart and then there's a couple really close together. And um, is that just practice? Yeah, I'd say just practice. Like I've probably done quite a fair bit of darning in our workshops now and I'm pretty sure it didn't start like this. It is just one of those ones where it's, like just doing it kind of a lot of times gets you like more used to more used to it and also like more used to like where the needle needs to go I think um, I rough it as well I'm just like oh just get it done and then actually part of the whole point is to to slow down and to <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's quite good though on certain things like if you are just wanting to get it done quickly if you're doing something a bit like chunky or something like that then it kind of becomes like part of it if it's just a bit of an uneven texture like, yeah something new to it so it's quite nice, like when you've just got something like that. If you just want to actually be like, oh, I'm just going to add a whole, like, chunky bit of embellishment instead. <laughs> we always have a, a saying as well at our workshops: "Is done is better than perfect." Yeah. Because a lot of time, uh, actually, quite a lot of people come want things to look really perfect, and it's like it doesn't matter. It's a bit like we were just saying about mending the bra. It's, as long as it works mm. and it's going to hold it in place, and yeah, you might have to redo it another time. But um, it does matter as long as it's because what we try and say is, you know, if, like you said at the beginning and we're all the same that you have a big pile of mending and it's stopping you from wearing that item of clothing. So even if it's just sewing on a button, yeah. but once you get around to doing it, you're really pleased. You're like, oh, great. I, I forgot I had that and I really like wearing that. And 
you know, I can wear it again. And also it, it kind of means that, you know, that your clothes have a little story to them as well, I mm. think. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's not this like this identical thing you've picked up off the shelf that's the same as everyone else's. It's now got its own bit of character and you on it as well, which, um, you know, I think is really nice as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, we um we wrote a article for I think uh, Pebble magazine you've had at um, the festival, haven't you? Mm. We wrote a feature for them um just about kind of the well we call it mindfulness the same, but I really like that mm. mindfulness. Yeah. Great. Um, and we we wrote about that, and one of the tips was that if you've got um say like a a pair of jeans, you know, why just to kind of help um with the mindfulness. It's just thinking about like where was the last time you wore them if you haven't worn them at home mm. um where are you going to wear them when we're allowed out again <laughs> um you know just to kind of kind of focus your mind on what you're doing rather than sort of you know doing three jobs at once which is usually my trick yeah and like it feels like because clothes are so proportionally cheap now in you know or certainly fast fashion is a lot of people might think well what's what's the point what's the benefit in mending something when actually mm. it's much quicker and easier to to ditch it and go and buy something new what what do you kind of say to that um we don't come across that too much actually uh people come along because they even if something you know they might have picked it up cheap they've still they still really like it i mean the amount of times we get quite um, sort of young women come along and they might have picked up a, a cheap dress, but they're like, oh, do you know what? I love wearing it. And it's got a whole, usually life is a pair of trousers, it's usually in the crouch or uh, maybe on a side seam. But because clothes are now made with, you know, really minimal seam allowance, so mm -hmm. they can be quite difficult to fix, um, then they just really want things repaired because they love wearing them. Yeah. Uh, so... I mean, I, I guess if people are looking out for us, they probably have already got, you know, in mind that they don't want to throw things away. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's a, a much wider group out there that we're trying to appeal to, to amend things, but, you know, maybe we've not quite reached it. Yeah, and do you find that, that conversations do sort of turn whilst people are sat around mending with you to, to kind of fast fashion and, and some of the impacts of it? yeah we did yeah it does come up a lot um i mean we we did a lot for um fashion revolution week we mm. was getting involved in um so what we did there was we had um we basically came up with the four top items that we think people bring in to to men so we sort of did a little audit at the beginning of the year of the I first couple of months of the year um and we sort of focused on that and then uh, created some tutorial videos on it um, to try and get people started really so kind of going back to that done is better than perfect and um, so one of them was like you're in a thigh holes in jumpers um I think one was taking up pens and sewing on a button I think I mm. yeah I mean I remember when um when we did our year buying nothing new I, I could sew I'd learned but I'd only like recently learned to sew but I just had this fear of like mending stuff and if if you know if some if a button came off or if anything that you know I just put it in a pile to give to my mother-in-law um Eleanor are you are you at a point where you need to tell us something and then I can carry on wittering on in a minute oh yeah I was just gonna say I'm just about to turn so to go in Brilliant. the other direction so I'll just start off in this way um which is pretty similar to what I was doing before so I've got to the point where I filled all the way across the hole and then done a couple of rows of stitching again just going into the knit fabric that's already there um just to secure it in and then you just turn and start working in a kind of 90 degree angle it's the way that you were going before um so you want to do a couple of rows of stitching before you hit the hole again um going across the top of it how um sort of picky do you need to be about going in and out of every single one because again I just go oh that's about right and you know <laughs> I mean I think it is it's kind of just the style that you're after obviously like a really classic darn if you're going for like the idea of like perfect like looking um you would I mean at this point you don't really need to worry about what's going on in the other direction it's only when you get to the hole sure. but like 
I think I find even when I like miss them and like end up doing like catch going over two or like going over a few of them, it's structurally it's still held together. Like it's still yeah. a weave. It's just a kind of different kind of weave. So you can yeah. kind of um, yeah, it's just going to create a slightly different like texture. But That's I don't feel what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's just like if you're weaving something on a loom or something, <laughs> it's, um, it's just a different pattern. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah I mean I think it's still going to hold together and it's also like it's just yeah a bit more unique maybe <laughs> yeah more unique I like yeah. that <laughs> I find if I'm doing it and not concentrating then I'll I'll leave little holes so um uh you know where I've not kind of woven in and out properly and then it's kind of left a few little holes um but I just go then go back over that bit so I'll just okay. kind of do that bit again but I won't yeah. pick it, I'll literally just kind of layer it on top. Oh, yeah, you can just go back through and like fill it in almost, like adding in like a new bit of yarn as well. So it's, it's quite a good technique for that, I think, the fact that you can kind of like go back and add to it, even once it, if you feel like there's something you want to change. Um, yeah, so I'm just about to get to the hole here. So again, done a couple of stitches before we hit the hole. And then now we're going to start going under and over the yarns that are going in that direction. Um, so this is kind of a bit fiddlier to show on a screen, but you're kind of just picking, getting your needle in between the yarns so that you're getting going over one yarn and under the next. Um, so you're just alternating that all the way across. And you can do it kind of all in one go if you feel comfortable doing that, or you can do a few at a time. Um, this is the bit that just takes a little bit more time and a little it's bit more idea well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah once you get your um like first row in there i kind of find that sometimes it will just start to kind of separate itself out a bit easier um like the yarns just kind of naturally split a bit so that can kind of help you so once you've done that in one direction you turn around and come back the other way and you're doing the same thing but you're just alternating the ones that you went over and under um you do the opposite on this row from the last one so the last that one i've gone over so i'm going to go under it here and you just do that all the way across and carry on doing that all the way across until you fill in the the whole hole is there a limit to the size of hole you can done no, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I've definitely seen um, other people done like basically entire jumpers back to life. Um, oh, really? I haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I don't know if you know like Celia Pym, who does a lot. Yeah, of yeah. Like some of her pieces are, yeah, they look like they're completely disintegrated, and somehow she's managed to done the whole kind of side of the jumper back together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I haven't quite got that far. But I think you can keep going with it. I guess it's just finding a thing, thing big enough to work on. Yeah. I think we've seen, haven't we, some people re-knitting that as well. And yeah. um, both Ellen and I, neither of us can knit, but um, we have kind of come across that at some of our workshops as well. People that are good at knitting, they might try and like re-knit. And even if it's in a different colour, just kind of pick up the knitting that's there. Yeah. Yeah, so I was saying that, you know, I'd, I'd never even like sewed on a button or anything like that. And then we did our year buying nothing new and I'd called it my make do and mend year. And I was like, oh, this is stupid. I'm going to have to mm -hmm. to step up here and, and do some mending. So um, I think the first thing was, you know, sewing a button on. And and it's ridiculous. I don't know why I was scared of it. I was, you know, I, was, I think I was scared. Well, it, I won't be able to do it and it'll go wrong and it'll fall off again. Well, so what? Like, then I can have another go. Do you know, yeah. I don't know why we, whether it was just me or whether it's a more general thing, we're, we're sort of very scared now of getting things wrong, it feels like, and sort of having a go. But, you know, I, I quite like, I, I, I love mending now because I feel like, well, it's already, you know, I'm not wearing it because it needs mending. So, you know, I might as well give it a go and um, never cock it up, cock it up. But, you know, there's a chance I might not. <laughs> yeah, that's all the, I think you put on Twitter that uh, you patched your son's jeans. That would be really mm. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's a, that's after many years of varying techniques. But patching knees is, um, especially on kids' jeans, I find it 
um you know because i you know i'm all about like just getting it done and i'm very impatient so i always try and do it on the machine but it's a bugger isn't it trying to get it around the are there any special tips for doing that what on the knees mm. what you mean because i suppose being children's clothes well you mean they're narrow, right, to narrow get and, and so it's all right going one way and then you try and go at at 90 degrees and it's like mm. ramming it round yeah there isn't really um because i mean there are special really specialist machines that so uh, i um know a bag designer that he's got a special machine that that would sew that oh, way really? like, in a way so that way so that way but i mean they really you know yeah the rest of us wouldn't have that machine yeah they're really specialist so i think i've only um i mend my niece's skinny jeans and she's mm. a teenager but she's got skinny legs so i just did it by hand it's the only way really yeah lisa says open the seam up and i did look at that lisa but it was kind yeah. of like double stitched you know there was it yeah, felt like there was lots like, of rows of stitching to undo and then i was like oh i'm a bit yeah i mean like that yeah yeah um i i mean to be honest i really like hand sewing so i i probably would be tempted to, to, to stick by hand anyway but yeah i mean that is that is one way of doing it it's a good idea so yeah and that's that's what i did with a couple of i've still got a big pile of knees that need um and, and again it's, it is that quite therapeutic you know my hand sewing is not the neatest but if you look at it you know from a, from a distance and in a bad light it's all right <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the look <laughs> yes yeah 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 rustic <laughs> yeah <laughs> are you getting on Eleanor? Yeah, getting there. It is quite a quite quite a fine yarn, quite a big hole. So it might take me a while. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to start on the jeans while you carry on? Yeah, you could do. The other one quickly, can I ask before you um before you start, Sarah, is like the cuffs on school school jumpers. They always seem to kind of fray and, and get holes in them. And I've tried sort of sewing them up and actually I sewed one up and my son went why have you done that? That's where I poked my finger. I was like, yeah, no, can you stop doing that, please? <laughs> um, is, there, is there an easy way to do that? Because obviously it's sort of ribbed, stretchy, you know, nasty, mm. synthetic. Yeah, um, well, I guess I tend to, with like the cuffs or things, like where it's become unraveled, um, kind of doing like uh, a stitch going kind of over the edge of it so that you're kind of trapping it. Mm -hmm. um, so like, yeah like doing a kind of loop over the top of yeah um, I find that works quite well um, on there so you mean kind of like going over this bit yeah but these are um you know the sort of um polyester type jumpers you know school jumpers that you get um and you have to get this sort of you know because they're branded or whatever um mm. so yeah but yeah I think I think again I, I you know I, I sort of, I'll do it on the machine because it's be better than my hand sewing but actually it's one of those situations I think again where I would just be better like sitting down and hand sewing it in front of the telly yeah, yeah and it can be a bit sorry Elena um I was just say as well once it's like you're saying like it's a kind of polyester like maybe quite like a cheap school jumper mm, yeah yeah it's already starting to go as well with the machine it can probably sometimes even make it like worse just yeah the quality anyway so it's kind of one of those ones that like sometimes a bit of hand it's kind of it'll be yeah. a little bit longer even though it's harder to put it in yeah sorry sarah i interrupted you when you were going to start your patches as well oh no that's okay um i just because i know that um karen was thinking about doing the in the thighs and it just happened that's what i brought with me tonight um so with these ones i've kind of already got started um but exactly what Karen said they just <laughs> that looks so funny with the I know so it's not just women it happens to men as well um so basically yeah they so you can see with these they haven't quite gone yet which is the best time to catch them so you can see they've just kind of starting to go here but before they've actually got holes it just makes it a bit easier then what I've done is I've used an embroidery hoop um i just find it much easier to just kind of hold it taut while you're stitching this is if you do it by hand um i can talk about doing it on the machine as well but on the inside i've got a 
big piece of denim so um with denim it's not really the kind of thing i mean yeah, you can you can buy it but it's quite easy to, to collect scraps of denim so you might have some jeans that really you know have seen the last days and that you can then just save and use um for when you want to do patching or you might have some jeans that you cut into shorts so to keep the legs um i've got short legs so i'm always taking my jeans up so then i'll keep the bottom bottom bit and you can use that for patches so always keep a big stash of the denim so here i've created a patch now this one i did which is quite unlike me actually i did um overlock this one to kind of stop it fraying but you don't have to or you can zigzag it if you've got a machine um but i pinned that in place first and i've made sure it's big enough to go over both sides of the thighs and then i put the embroidery hoop in place that just makes it easier um now with these ones because um well number one then my husband said he's a bit more conservative but also when it's on the inner thigh i think it's quite nice to to not be too visible um and you can buy a denim thread i don't think it's going to come up on the screen but it's it's got um it's like a chambray look so you've got kind of like the white and the blue in it so it actually looks denim and that's quite nice to blend in but then if you're doing these you can do like really make a feature of them um hello bernice has said i've made them a jeans so many times they've become on a bit of a personal art project yeah, I've got a pair like that too. It's great. So that's one side, and then this one's kind of work in progress. But I sort of just did it a bit different, where I've tucked in the the fray. I mean, there's so many, you know, ways you can do it. It's just sort of personal taste. I think. Oh, I did do the back of these ones as well. Uh, yeah, I just sort of did a little silver one there. Um, but with these ones, I just wanted to keep it really subtle. And I've already made a start. So I've used the denim thread. I mean, it's just denim colour, cotton thread. Um, and I've doubled it up. So you've got two thickness. And then I started from the seam and just kind of followed the lines. And I'm literally just working my way down. So really similar to how Ellen is doing the darning without the bit with the hole. I was literally if I can it's quite hard to it back to front um so I don't know if I can do it back to front but here so I have got an actual little hole here so what I'm doing is just just stitching over the hole and just to hold hold that bit of fraying in place now if you have got a big hole in the inner thigh and you want to hide it you could put the patch on the outside it doesn't have to be on the inside Yeah, I, I um, some really lovely chat because I, um, I, I'm a big fan of visible mending as well. But um, like Karen says, I, you know, maybe on the crotch and inner thighs, um, be a bit more subtle about it. But then Vanessa said her inner thigh patches are bright red, which she realises is a bold choice for a lady's undergarment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get any comments, Vanessa? Do you get any um, any sort of funny, funny comments? People randomly start talking to me and probably about my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one I'm doing visible mending it's always a conversation start it is it totally is <laughs> yeah. I, I had a pair of jeans that had loads of patches and it was just people would um you know I'd be sitting next to someone in assembly at school or something and they say oh I really love aren't your jeans great and you know and I'd and you can just start a really gentle conversation with them then about repair and fast fashion and you know valuing clothes rather than um you know glaring at them if they're holding a Primark bag it's um it's a really lovely way to start to start conversations isn't it yeah definitely and I think it just kind of yeah it opens people up to different ways of like repairing as well so I think that's like a lot of people are kind of scared out of doing repair because of the you know like yeah the idea of it being perfect or mm, it's perfect and visible yeah. yeah um but like as soon as you start like playing around with it like making it into a new looking totally new then kind mm. of repair seems a lot more like approachable and something that everyone can do as well yeah 
And I think just that also like, you know, that, that I can then say to people, look, you know, I'm not actually particularly good at sewing, but you just need to have a go. And, um, you know, and knowing that there are places like like yours that people can come in, in a really sort of safe environment and, um, you know, come and be shown how to do it. Jessica says um, she wishes this kind of thing was taught in schools. And yeah, it is. It, it really should be, shouldn't it? Mm. And Karen's asking, would the jeans patching work with jeans that have lycra in them? That's a really good question, Karen. Yeah, these have, um, these are quite stretchy, as you can see. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, so it works pack, is that a similar stretch or is that normal denim? Um, it is actually just, it's just coincidence though that there's an old pair of jeans that really had seen their day. And I think these are the patches from my jeans and they're probably a bit more stretchy because they're women's ones. Um, but I did, it is, um, you do need to be a bit careful because with these ones, this didn't work so basically this little patch here is like a stretchy velvet um and it didn't really work you can see it's kind of puckering because it's um it's too soft so you can see on the inside it's too soft and stretchy um so that wasn't right i mean it it's good to show for i didn't mean for it to be a mistake but it's good to show to how to not do it um so you want something really the denim is is good but um and if you had stretchy jeans could you put a non-stretchy patch on them yeah yes yeah, so, uh, so there's lots of kind of you know you've got swatches like mm. this so i think this is a piece of shirt and fabric um especially kind of these kind of check shirt type ones where you've got the sort of slightly brushed cotton you know they're quite substantial that's really what you want to match the jeans so the stretch isn't quite as important it's more it's a bit like Ellen was saying with the yarn. If you've got the the substantial kind of weight that's going to not pull. So if you use something like, so I'd use that fine jersey or if you use the silk, you just your fabrics are going to fight against each other and it's just not going to be very secure. So it'll last for a little while, but not very much. And what um, about leggings? I've got a couple of pairs of leggings that like the they haven't got holes around the um sort of inner thighs, but the the seams are obviously I need to do a bit more Joe Wicks, the seams are going around the, <laughs> the inner thighs. And I've tried, um, you know, just sort of sewing the seam up again, but it it almost sort of, I don't know, it just is, is whether it's a very weak point, it just all sort of starts to shred again around there. Is that just, I need to give up at that point? Um, well, we have quite a lot of leggings uh, that come in, don't we, Eleanor? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's probably yeah it starts to kind of tear at the holes where the stitching's been so mm. normally we probably try and like add in a bit of like fabric there but mm. stitching a bit away from where the where the tear is so okay. you're not adding to that area that's already a bit torn mm. and can and you patch, the... um, sorry i keep interrupting with loads of questions <laughs> can you can you pat if you've got like kids with um leggings and they've gone through the knee can you can you patch them yeah, so I think what's um, important to think about uh, with stretch fabrics is it likes a zigzag um, stitch. So mm -hmm. if you looked, if you looked at the stitching inside your leggings that were from the manufacturer, it would be something that's called overlocking. Um, so it's what I did on this patch. Yeah. Um, and basically that get that stitch gives it a stretch. So if you're mm -hmm. using a rent a regular running stitch with a stretchy fabric, it it, they just kind of fight against each other so if you're even if you're hand sewn if you hand sew in a zigzag um that's going to kind of stretch with the fabric um and if you're doing it on the machine then use a zigzag stitch and it works the same way that an overlocker works if you haven't got an overlocker cool and you do the same as you're doing with the jeans there put a, another piece of um sort of stretchy fabric underneath and then just sew across yeah so don't use woven fabric use a stretchy fabric so yeah. try and find something so maybe you've got maybe one of your leggings you're like oh do you know what these really aren't repairable but it's worth saving them because then you could cut those out yeah. yeah to use them um you know for to mend other leggings so it's quite important to get that kind of matching of the fabric so they're both stretching together and they'll be similar way i mean most leggings you get some thinner than others but mm. generally they're you know pretty much similar fabrics yeah it's I'm um so with Ellen this we time. get uh i know it's so neat it's so neat. um and other things um uh, that comes up is we get um 
we get some people who are quite ambitious with their upcycling that come to our workshops um and sort of one thing we say is it's kind of learning a, a little bit about the construction of clothes and um at the minute you've got the great british sewing bee on and mm. i know it's probably not i mean i love it but i know it's probably not for everyone but even if you just watch the bit of it or watch the bit of it on catch up it's really good to learn about the construction so you can see kind of how you know how things put together because they'll have a little kind of paper cut out and they'll show you exactly like they did a tennis dress and you know you think well, that would be quite straightforward but it really wasn't and they'll show you all the different layers and how it's all constructed um so even if you just watch a bit of one it's it's just quite good to kind of realize how when you sort of learn how things are put together in the factory it means it you kind of then pick up how you can put them together on your menu. Yeah. It's looking good, Eleanor. Yeah, <laughs> just about finished, I think. So I can turn it over and show it from the other side. So. Yeah, it's a good thing if it gets, gets neater when you turn it the other way. So it's all filled in there. My goodness me. <laughs> it looks really good. <laughs> I've been is, that, is that a jumper, is it, did you say? Yeah, so, yeah, it's a jumper that has, I've been wearing with this hole in for so long and I keep taking it to the workshop, <laughs> but like, not getting around to fixing it. So <laughs> it's a good, good moment to get through my mending pile. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that is the thing. We teach people to mend their clothes. Yeah. If I turn up with a hole in something, yeah. it'd be embarrassing. I <laughs> <laughs> wear it to one of our workshops once because I was like, oh, I can actually just darn on my arm. And then yeah. Oh, we'll do it. <laughs> the other really common thing that, that I find is, um, and I, I don't know where they come from, do you ever get t shirts and they just get like tiny little holes in them, like just in random places? And I don't know where they come from or. Do you know what causes them? I think it's the wash machine. Yeah. What do you think, Eleanor? Yeah, I think it can be that. And then, yeah, just like getting snagged on maybe, depending where it is, like on your belt or on like people's right. knee, or just like, yeah, like catching on the dip or something like that. I think a lot of t-shirts are quite easy to just, you can pull it and then it will just, that will just happen quite quickly. And what's the best I've, way to deal with that? I've got one here actually. I was just doing this earlier. It was just one of my messy darnings that um so I keep coming off camera actually my things I've got. But um this one of my messy darnings where I wasn't paying much attention, but I just finished it. But um I think it's uh so I've got a denim skirt with the kind of metal button and where I tuck this in, I'm always getting a hole there. And I I think that's what's done it on this one. So I um darned it, not nearly as good as Eleanor's back to back. <laughs> in the front but this is the one that I was talking about where um I'd have like little holes that I'd missed that it had quite a lot of like small holes all over it rather than one big hole so I just darned the whole area but then I had to keep going over it where I'd miss little bits because it's a very sort of fine you know mm, t-shirt rather really than a chunky jumper brilliant um and I and I keep taking you away from your jeans Sarah do you just do a horizontal line or do you crisscross back over it um, no, just the horizontal line. So I literally would just carry on and I would carry on down here and then I would move the embroidery hoop um, and do on here. Now, if you've got a sewing machine, um, which I haven't got an example here, but if you've got a sewing machine, it's really good to use the zigzag on the sewing machine and literally just working from this point and you just zigzag out and kind of oh, like cool. little. Um, and you think when you, you're doing it, you think, oh, no, that, you know, it looks quite obvious. But when you're wearing them, you can't even see them. And you can't feel them either. Like they, you know, they don't feel uncomfortable. Um, and I hope people aren't staring too closely at my inner thighs anyway. <laughs> That's the bright red light for me. Yeah, it's already in the eye line anyway, is it? So it should be okay. <laughs> Amazing. Guys, does anybody else have any other um, questions? I feel like I've monopolised all the questions. Um, Diz says she thinks you can see a craftivism sticker on your yeah. pimple. There is, and there's that. Uh, I got the book. I'm oh, a big fan of craftivism. If yeah. you guys haven't, um, anyone in the chat haven't come across Sarah Corbett from um, Craft Craftivist Collective, isn't she? Um, mm, yeah, she's great. just phenomenal. I interviewed her for the for my podcast um, a couple of years ago, and she is just 
another of these kind of like powerhouses of like creating change and just quietly going about her business mm. like doing amazing things and um so yeah I would definitely recommend if anyone wants to have a look and, and check her out as well um so yeah did yeah. you guys are, are you have we sort of covered the things that that you were wanting to because we got probably another five minutes before I have to hot foot it off but if we're all um hot foot it off to the open mic but um yeah yeah so I think just um to say that we've got um because we've not been doing so many workshops we've had time to do videos on our website so they're called how-to videos so there's a section on there and we just every week kind of putting more and more on there so Ellen has done if you don't want to dance I think she's done another technique for that I've kind of done the more sort of simpler construction so like measuring your your jeans or your um, trousers to take up doing a hem sand on the button um and if anyone's got any that we haven't done and they'd like to see we're always open to see what you know people want to learn so we're quite happy to do lots of more videos yeah i'm just looking on your website now you've got how to take up a hem how to repair a hem how to take up jeans darning video tutorial how to repair without a sewing machine like amazing loads and loads of stuff and um you were saying as well when we were chatting in the green room that you've got a sort of a weekly is it weekly or monthly um sort of um mending online mending group that you're doing at the moment yeah so we do it um two mondays a month so it's like almost every other week basically really? um yeah that we're doing over zoom cool and how can we find that if we is it open to anybody to to rock up yeah anyone can come along yeah um either sign up through the newsletter on our website or through our Instagram, we can just add you to the our newsletter and then you'll get the details of how to get into the Zoom meeting on the day. Cool, and are you up at Fast Fashion Therapy on um, Instagram? Yeah, that's it. Brilliant, and you also do, I saw you share this on Twitter, like if anybody's stuck with a, you know, a specific mend or maybe they've got the amending pile and they've got several questions they want to ask you, you do these sort of half hour one-to-one -one video sessions, which I think is such a brilliant idea. Um, so again, can you just tell people a little bit about that and how they can um, book one in? Yeah, sure. So that we're booking those through Eventbrite. So there's a link to that um, on our website and the Instagram as well. Um, so those sessions, we've had people so far who are kind of like know kind of roughly what they want to do, maybe like say with darning, where it's like darning a hole in a jumper, but it's just like a different shape to a classic like circle hole or whatever yeah. so you know it's a little bit more complicated and they just want some extra support with it or I know like Sarah's um helped out with altering a waistcoat um so there's quite a lot of variety in what we can help out with over FaceTime or Zoom. Brilliant um, and just a couple of quick questions that just popped up into the the question box Diz says is there anything you feel is too difficult to mend? Um I mean I feel like you can kind of keep going with it um and keep I think there's not a point where like there's a definite line where you should give up on something like I've repaired a jacket before that was a faux leather jacket that I actually got in a charity shop as kind of part of a project um but that it totally disintegrated so it's completely flaking apart and it just looked like it should go in the bin but I managed to repair it and kind of bring it back to life I think you just got to be willing to like embrace the change of repairing it <laughs> rather than think that it's going to stay like how it was before yeah um, and how do you fix the toe seam in socks that if they've either got holes or are ripped? Um, I mean, you can do the darning over that as well. Um, it's just obviously about getting it so that it's comfortable to wear. Mm. Um, sometimes I found it's just better to do a kind of overstitch to kind of loop it mm. like back together, depending on how big the hole is, because mm -hmm. um, that'll be more similar to how it was kind of joined together originally. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. This has been really nice kind of calming. Do you know they do that like slow TV where you just watch like a barge go along a canal? I think you should start, you know, pitch this to the BBC and we can all just watch them sit there and darn and just think <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to in the schedule coming up. <laughs> therapy, I can see why you're like fast fashion therapy. I feel a bit more grounded and a bit. Um, so, yeah, that's absolutely fabulous. So um, I'll pop this replay up in the... Um, or I think I've, I've sort of posted it into the group to say, come along, we're doing it now. So if you guys want to just pop any links or anything underneath there, and, and are you happy if people have got any questions they suddenly think of or anything to to um, sort of, if people pop a, pop a thing on there and tag you? Yeah, to, is that on the Facebook group? 
yeah yeah in the, in the festival pop-up group yeah oh in the festival yeah yeah, yeah, and um, and just say thanks for having us, and we've really enjoyed. We've joined quite a few sessions. We've really oh, enjoyed brilliant. it. Thank you. Yeah, oh, it's, it's been really good. good. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely lovely to have you, and take care. And hopefully, you'll be back like mending in person with your lovely yeah, community soon. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> take care. Thanks, Bye, -bye. Jen. Bye. Bye.